Today it's time for part two. Last time I told you what happened with me in 2012 and today I want to talk more about the recovery part of it and like I said in my last video it's both physically obviously and mentally because it was pretty traumatic but before I get started with that <laughs> I have two corrections to make because I told you guys that I was kept on a machine called an ECMO and that machine only takes care of the heart, the lungs and the brain, not the kidneys. <laughs> I was kept on dialysis for my kidneys. And the second thing is that I didn't start bleeding in my lung just a couple of days after I woke up. Actually, it was four weeks afterwards and I actually remember this day because I sat up for the first time, which was a very big achievement. But unfortunately, it was kind of like one step forward, two steps back because of the lung thing. Altogether, I was in the hospital for three months completely and six of those weeks were in the intensive care. This whole experience was actually like being born again. I had to learn how to do basic human actions all over again. Something as basic as breathing. I remember as I was getting better I had to start learning how to breathe on my own again without depending on the respirator and I was terrified. <laughs> it was hard. It felt like such a strain. We would practice this I think every day until once I was able to breathe by myself through the whole night and the whole day. And I was so happy and proud of myself um, and really grateful <laughs> for the fact that I can breathe. And then I had to learn how to use my voice again because I hadn't been able to speak or use my voice in like so long. And I remember the first time I was trying to make some noise with my voice, it was like this beeping sound and my, my voice was like so high pitched and feeble and I was like oh my gosh am I ever going to be able to sing again but of course the more I spoke the stronger and the better it got and I remember this one nurse in particular used to encourage me to ask for things and use my voice as much as possible and then I started trying to eat by myself again with my mouth <laughs> and ooh, that was pretty amazing to be able to eat on your own again and taste and smell and like really enjoy the food um, <laughs> And I remember telling my father that he was supposed to make my favorite broccoli curry with rice. And I cherished those four or five bites I was actually able to get down. <laughs> now all of these things are probably not in the right order because I mean I have all of these memories but they're kind of like in a jumble because things just happened but um, <clears throat> I also remember the first time I was actually able to like bend forward so that I could put on my night shirt and I was like look <laughs> I can bend forward and I was so happy about that and being able to sit on the bedside for the first time that was really really hard and straining and I was so weak and I was sweating and I couldn't even hold my head up by myself somebody had to <laughs> there was one nurse behind me and then there were two nurses on either side of me 
and then there was another nurse holding my head up because I was not able to use my muscles to hold my head up um, but I sat on the bedside and that was a big celebration for everyone but at that point I was pretty frustrated actually because I felt like why is being able to sit up such a big deal like what happened to me and another thing was that I had to kind of start learning how to use my left hand which was <laughs> a process because I was a right-handed girl from before so I was like what I need to be left-handed now like I was just forced into being a left-handed person now my father actually was the one who encouraged me most to start writing a little bit drawing simple things um, and we used to do this every day he used to come into my room sit beside me and make me write something or draw something that was of course very very helpful really kick-started my process of becoming a left-handed girl <laughs> and moving on i remember being able to stand on my two feet for the first time after such a long time and oh that was also really really tough but i did it and that was such a happy moment for everybody <laughs> Um, and then of course after a while I was able to walk take a couple of steps by myself so I got up and I tried walking taking really small steps and of course I did it again and again and I got stronger and I got better and it was a long process all of these things were very tough and it was all a huge process but um, it was pretty amazing once I was actually able to do these things again and I really learned to appreciate the smallest things that I'm able to do. Things that we normally just take for granted. Now, I've mostly talked about the physical part of it, um, but I think the emotional and the mental part of it actually hit me the most when I came home. Because mine and my whole family's life was just kept on hold all of these three months and now we had to try to get back into our normal routine and start working again start going to school again start doing our normal things again but so much had changed a lot of it was really tough but a lot of it was really amazing too but anyways i remember just feeling so frustrated and upset and feeling like such a burden to everybody because i needed to ask for help with <laughs> everything i had to learn how to dress myself again shower again eat again you know with a spoon or with my hand whatever um because everything just took so much more effort and uh, and it was frustrating because this took time and it took effort and i just wanted to get well <laughs> i just wanted to be fine again but my parents were very encouraging and very supportive they had to go through so much themselves i'm so grateful for them 
and my sister too she made me do things that i thought i would never be able to do <laughs> we walked a lot more than i ever thought i would be able to do and we did so many things and she was so encouraging my whole family was so encouraging and i started <clears throat> learning how to draw again slowly with my left hand and I got better and better and honestly speaking I feel like I'm a little bit better with my left hand than I ever was with my right hand which is kind of interesting um, and then of course I <clears throat> started singing again slowly all of these things really just helped me process all the changes that happened to me in my body just one year after this whole life-changing event happened i was able to enter and win a young scientist contest with the help of my teachers and my parents of course and that was such an amazing thing and I felt very happy with myself and from then actually it just went upwards I became more and more self-confident I became better and better at all the things that I loved doing singing drawing art I actually struggled a lot with my body too because it was not the same as it was before I had lost so much weight and it was full of scars it's still full of scars um, and the fact that my hand is not there um, it just really made me very insecure but now I was feeling so confident I told you guys in my alopecia video that this same year I started going out without my wig and just recently I saw this quote that I thought was just so perfect it said that scars are like tattoos but with much better stories and that's so true uh, before I would want to hide my scars but now I really don't care because these scars tell people that yeah I have gone through quite a bit and I survived quite a lot and I should be proud of that so I don't cover my scars up anymore I do not care if people see them and I don't care if people ask me I will tell them quite openly what has happened to me that's a part of me it's a part of shaping who and what I am and like I said before I'm very proud of myself I can't really think of anything more to talk about right now but I do have some very vivid memories of what happened like in the hospital and like stories kind of so if you're interested to hear some of those I might do that later in the future but for now I think this should do it <laughs> and I really hope you enjoyed it and I would love it if you comment down below and like this video and also subscribe if you haven't already and also share it if you think it might be helpful to somebody because you know what I'm just so thankful that I'm living and I'm able to breathe and I'm able to walk and I'm able to talk and yeah I'm living so I'm sending out all of my love and take care of yourself and I will see you next time